Okay, so that expression that we had on the previous slide can be written as follows. Uh, we can write V in terms of the basis as VI EI equals A, our newly introduced tensor, acting on U, which we write as UJ EJ. Okay. Observe again, I've introduced indices, right? But I've taken care to introduce different indices, right? I for V and J for representation of U. That will be very important as we go ahead, right? If we were to use the same indices on both sides, we would, uh, we, we, we would get confused and probably end up with, a, a, with, with the wrong result. Okay, so here we are. Now, uh, tensors straight away have an important property, okay? And we're going to use that right away. Uh, there is a property of tensors which comes from the fact that they are linear operators. Okay? And that property is that now if I go back to writing VI, EI uh, here, I can pull that component uj out because it's after all uj is just a scalar right so i can write this as u sub j a acting on ej right right because of this uh, action because of the fact that a is a linear operator and because of the fact that u is a vector right that's where it comes from now observe then that a ej is a vector itself, right? Because EJ is a vector and A is a tensor which acts upon vectors to give us another vector, right? So observe that this is also a vector. Well, if it's a vector, if A, EJ is a vector, I can write out an expansion for it in terms of the basis, right? I can write out this vector that I put an under brace for also in terms of its components, okay? And I'm going to do that right now. I am going to write it as follows. I'm going to expand it in the same basis, so I'm going to use these um, basis vectors. Again, I'm going to introduce new indices here, right? I'm going to use E sub L, okay? I'm going to write its uh, components, right? The components of this vector that I put an under brace on, I'm going to write its components as A, L, J. The J reminds us of the fact that we are talking of a vector which came about from the action of A on the basis vector E, J. Okay? That's why I have the J in the subscript on A here. Okay? And the L is just a representation of the fact that it is the component corresponding to EL. Okay? So, what does this imply for us? It implies then that our representation allows us to write VIEI equals UJ uh, E, sorry, A L J E L. Okay? Everywhere this summation convention is implied. Okay? All right. Uh, what else can I do with it now? I want to be able to look at just the components that we have, right? The components of the vectors and this new, uh, this new object that I've introduced, A sub LJ. The way I can do that is to dot this entire equation with some basis vector. And again, just to keep things clean, and keep things completely general, I'm going to use a new index. I'm going to dot all of this by some basis vector, let me say uh, E sub K. All right? Okay? So, what does that lead to now? Should be easy enough. On the left hand side, we have VI delta I K equals on the right hand side using the linearity of all the objects we are working with 
we have delta k l okay on the left hand side then the, the chronicle delta does its job it gives us vk equals uj now the chronicle delta on the right hand side does its job to convert our a l j into a k j and to see how this works you could very well just expand the relation on the second last line expand the right hand side on the relay on, on the second last line in particular expand the chronicle delta symbol and you will see that you end up with what is on the right hand side on the very last line okay all right um, now we you know we, we could leave it in this fashion or just for convention recognizing the fact that uh, these are just multiplications and multiplications commute right what that lets us do is that in, instead of writing the right hand side as uj akj we could equally write it in a slightly more convenient and conventional fashion as akj uj it's really no different right because of the commutativity of multiplication what this tells us then is a little more about our tensor a okay it tells us that yes we introduced this notion of it uh, of 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 a relating vectors u and v well for u and v we had this uh, component representation in terms of basis vectors what has happened now by introducing a is that this component representation has led to the has pointed out to us that look we can introduce some other objects here these these akj right we're going to see in a second what this implies for the tensor A itself. Okay? Before we do that, let's just look at what that relation really implies, right? We have VK equals A KJ UJ. In this relation, the repeated index is J, which implies that there is a sum over J. Okay? So the way to think about this is that this is really A K1 U1 plus a k2 u2 plus a k3 u3 all right now of course this holds for each k all right and so what you will see is that we are essentially seeing this sort of a representation right if we allow k to run over 1 2 3 we will get our three components v1 v2 v3 if you carry out the multiplications on the right hand side you will see that all of this simply re reduces to a very familiar object to you a very familiar operation to you from your study of linear algebra right This action of our newly introduced object A, the tensor, upon vectors, upon a vector u to give us another vector v, can be understood in the context of our traditional matrix vector multiplication from linear algebra. Okay? So let me just put that statement down. V equals A u uh, can be understood. Uh, as matrix vector multiplication in linear algebra. Okay? Now, this is all well and good, but um, if you think about it, we haven't quite precisely said what these A11, A12s are, right? What are these new objects, AKJs? How do we really understand them? Right? The way we're going to understand them is by um, 
exploiting the fact that we have a basis here. Recall that when it came to understanding our representation for this vector u in the in using this basis, we went to components. Okay, so the answer is that we are going to relate these to the components of this tensor, right? Some this this we are going to introduce this new notion of components of a tensor, just as we have components of this vector given a basis. Okay. You may want to think uh, for a couple of seconds about how we could go about doing this. Okay? The approach, of course, is going to be to do something like V equals AU, but we want to do something a little more specific than that. Okay? Think about it for a second and we'll proceed. The way we are going to do it is the following. Okay? We are going to say, uh, we are going to introduce the notion of the components of our tensor A relative to the basis E sub i. Okay? And the way we're going to do this is the following. We're going to say, let's consider, consider first this. A acting on a vector, in particular acting upon the basis vector Ej. All right? Okay? We're going to start out with this. Okay? Now, we already have a representation for this, right? We, on the previous slide, wrote this out again in terms of the basis by recognizing that A, E, J is itself a vector, which we can also expand in this basis, right? And what we did on the previous uh, slide was to write it out in this fashion. We wrote it out as A, K, J, E, K where the J reminds us that we came to this by A acting on the basis vector Ej, and the K is simply the way we introduce this expansion in terms of our basis vectors, right? Observe that here the sum is over K, not over J, okay, on the right-hand side. All right, the next thing to do is to say, well, I can now bring in another vector, uh, let me call it E sub I and I can dot this whole equation by it, right? A, E, J is a vector. I'm dotting it with E, I. And of course, I have to do the same on the right-hand side. E, I dotted with A, K, J, E, K. Using the linearity of everything on the right-hand side, we know that this can be written as A, K, J, E, I, dotted with E, K. And along comes our steady companion in continuum mechanics, the Kronecker delta. Okay? And what does it do? It acts upon the right-hand side, to turn the K index on A into the I index. Okay? So what we see is that these components that we came across, or these new um, objects that we came across, the A sub IJ, can be defined as appears on the left-hand side now. Right? This is what we mean by the components of a tensor A in the basis E. This is to be compared with our representation of, uh, uh, compare this with components of a vector. 
Okay, this is completely uh, the same thing really as writing u dot ei equals component ui. Okay, all right. Observe that uh, the components of u have a single index i, and that is got at by dotting u with a single basis vector ei. The components of A have two indices, i and j, and that is got at by dotting A, first by having A act upon E, and then dotting the resulting vector with the basis vector EI. Okay? So, the kinds of tensors we've introduced so far have uh, tend to be represented by two indices in terms of their components, and this is why we call them, okay, we say A is a second order tensor. Okay? That's represented by the fact that it has two indices uh, in contrast with vectors which have a single index. Alternately, uh, using this idea of tensors, I, I, I mentioned a, a while earlier that tensors are a generalization of vectors. Well, vectors are first order tensors. Okay? Uh, so A is a second order tensor, and uh, let me try to squeeze this here. Vectors are first order tensors. Therefore, what about scalars? What kind of tensors are scalars? Are they tensors at all? obvious, right? Scalars are zero-order tensors. Okay? Generalizing that idea. Okay. We will stop here for this segment.